Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to build an adult cage uh, and show you how I go about building them, uh, what tricks I use. Um, you know, there's several different ways you can do the front. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you how you can build this without a table saw. All you're going to need is a drill, circular saw, and a couple other uh, tape measure and things like that. So I'll show you those things here in a minute too. So anyway, I'm going to build one of these. I've got seven built and one more. So I'm just going to do a little time-lapse video, kind of show you how to do it. So let's get started. Okay, so we're going to get set up here. Uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, I'm going to set up my saw horses. Um, you've got to use saw horses when working with a full sheet of plywood. So. Um, <clears throat> You can get these at Lowe's or Home Depot. They're about 20 bucks a piece. Um, and then what you want to do is get you a couple of two by fours. I think these are two by threes or something. Smaller two by fours. They work pretty well. side so it's already sanded but the opposite side is kind of rough. Uh, you can buy plywood that um, both sides are sanded. Um, me, I'm not going to pay the extra money because you're never going to see the back side or the top of the cage. But if you just build one, go ahead and buy the sanded side, finished side on both and uh, it'll make it a lot easier for you to finish your, your piece off. So everything we need to do this, circular saw, you've got to have some way of putting it together with screws or whatnot. If you have a nail gun, you can use that. Um, you're going to need a pencil, you're going to need a ruler, a box of screws, and you're going to need a straight edge. So you can buy something like this, which Basically, you put on your wood, tighten it down, and now I've got a straight edge to cut with. Um, which, you know, this works pretty good, um, but I don't prefer to work with this. I like it a little bit simpler. I've got an uh, angle iron here, and I'll show you what it is. It's just basically a straight edge that I put down. And I use clamps. I've got a couple clamps here. And I'll just clamp it to the board. And one thing about this is when you use a straight edge to cut your wood, you need to know the distance between your uh, blade and your, your fence. So right here, this little mark right here, from here to here is one inch. So I, I know exactly, you know, if I wanted it 17 and a half inches, I cut it at 18 and a half. Now, not all circular saws are the same. So on your circular saw, you just need to probably make a test cut and figure out what that difference is. Like this one here, this is an inch and I believe a quarter between here and here. So I like using this one because it's an inch, it's easier to do math. So, that's what you need. So my uh, my first cut is going to be my the the height of the cage. The inside walls are 17 and a half inches. So that would be my first cut. So I can get a whole cage out of one sheet of wood. This sheet of wood cost me forty one dollars, I think. So it's not bad. So basically. 
First thing I'm going to do is take my pencil and my ruler. Let's see what I have. So I do have my, my green, um, you can't see it, but there is four green spots on this board. Now, if you have a table saw and you want to cut those off, I suggest going ahead, cutting this half an inch longer so you can rip it on the table saw. Um, but you don't need to because you can just put it on the back, you'll never see it. So that's what I'm going to do. So I come down here and I'm going to mark it at 18 and a half inches on this side. I'm going to mark it at 18 and a half on this side. Okay. So now all I need to do is take my straight edge, put it on either mark, take my little, little clamp on there. <coughs> Now I'm just going to rip it. Oh, wait, I forgot one thing. So what you want to do is, so you're going to be cutting through, um, as you go and you're cutting through this, you're going to be actually cutting into these two by fours. So what you want to do is you don't really want to cut too deep into them. So take your depth, your fence, or your whatever you call it, and set it just a little past the depth of the wood. I know you can see this, but you just make sure it just goes through a little. And then you're going to just tighten it down. So now my depth of my blade is just a little deeper than the depth of the wood. Okay, I had to fix the lighting a little bit. It was kind of dark back there. So we're going to go ahead and make our first cut. The, um, the top and the bottom. So we've got, we've got the two sides, or three sides, and now we're going to cut the, the bottom and the bottom. So these dimensions are going to be 4 foot by 24 inches. pieces cut and we can move on to the next step so you got this piece of wood right here that's left over and uh, let's see how long it is and it's about a foot and a half okay so 
My, uh, my lips are, I think they're three inches. So I can get the top and the bottom out of this too. Um, what I like to do is I cut them and I glue them together so the double thickness. So um, now I'll be doing this on the table saw. You can do it, you can still do it like this, uh, but uh, I prefer to do this piece on the table saw. <coughs> but so you got your, your bottom and your top and your, your three sides. And now this remaining board is going to be the lip. So, all right, so I'm gonna tear this down and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, now we're gonna start assembling. So the first thing we're gonna do is decide um, what is gonna be the inside of the cage, right? So this is gonna be my inside of the cage because it's nice and smooth. Now there are some markings here and here, but I'll stand those off. The outside of the cage, you can see there's knot holes, lots of writing here. So this is going to be on the outside. So <clears throat> what I wanna do is Make sure that this is on the outside. Now, I have built this little bench to help me build cages. Since I always build them the same size and dimensions, it helps. Now, you can just use an ice chest or whatever to help you um, find something that's the same height as your sides. So what I do is decide which is going to be the front of my cage. So as you can see here, this is a nice smooth edge, no holes. But if you see on this, the back, it's all gapped out. It's really actually a piece of crap wood. Um, lots of holes and gaps in the plywood. So, but anyway, so I'm gonna make sure this is on the back because I wouldn't want this on the front of my cage. So this is gonna be inside and to the back. So I'm gonna lay this on here, right? So now it's on here. So now I've got my I'm going to put my back piece on first. So once again, I'm going, to look at, I'm going to look at both sides. I'm going to figure out which is going to be my inside. This is not holes, so that's going into the outside. And so my smooth piece is the inside. So I face it to the inside on the back. And I just kind of line it up with the edges, just like that. Okay, so now I've got a nice square flush fit. So I'm going to drill a pilot hole. I'm just going to drill about an inch off the end because you don't want, when that screw goes in, it's going to put pressure and it'll blow it out sometimes. So. Okay. The screws I'm going to be using are drywall screws, six by one and five eighths. Uh, they're the perfect size. So. All right, so I got my first screw in, it's flush. So now what I like to do, and you don't have to do this, but I like to just go ahead and mark every 12 inches on here. And that's where my screw is gonna be. Um, that way, you know, it's close to. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure my edge is flush. So I just kinda take my thumb and I push it in until it's flush. I'm just bang on a little bit. Now it's flush. And I just eyeball it. Sometimes you're gonna be wrong. You just redo it. Okay. Now, sometimes it'll be bowed in, so you have to pull the end of the board out till it's flush. So if you work your way down, you can manipulate the wood to go back and forth. So that's flush. And don't be afraid if you screw up, just drill another hole. No one's ever gonna see it. Now, you 
could use a nail gun, a brad nailer, and some glue if you wanted. Um, I thought about doing that, but since all my other cages are put together this way, I just thought I'd go ahead and finish them off the same way. If I made nicer ones, you know, and stained them and things like that, I might use a brad nailer. Okay, so now our bottom or top or whatever is connected to the back. We're going to flip it over and do the same thing. So now I'm just going to move this to the inside. Okay. And I'm going to figure out what my front is, what my back is. There's my back. It's got the chip out. So I just place it. something like a uh, rubber mallet or something. Don't use a regular hammer because it'll put marks on the wood, but um, so you can like, get it lined up. You just going to tap it out a little bit. Okay. So one thing I do is I use these clamps to really get them snug in tight to that back wall. And 
once I get it there, I am good. So let's get that. go. Now I can start putting my screws in on the sides. Here. So I pull this side here out until this is flush here and that's where I want to put that screw. Now this side is sticking out but once I put that screw in I can push it back in and make it straight. Put a little pressure with my knee. Okay. Now this just goes right back in. Now I got to straight. Oh, see how see how it splits out sometimes right there. But it don't matter. Okay, so I got that on. Now I'm going to flip it over and I'm gonna do the sides. Yeah. So just be careful when you're flipping it because just the screws on the back are holding it, so you just wanna hold it tight. piece to this one. Now if you want to put two, which we can, we'll put two on this one. Okay, and just like that, we had a cage. Here we are. It is ready for the front. So, I'm going to um, move this over to the table, reposition the camera, and I'm going to show you a little bit um, different ways of putting the track off. So, all right, let's talk about how to get the, uh, the glass on, okay? So, here's what I use, and it's, um, it's some plastic tracking. It's made by, it's a weird name. Nape and bulk. Let's see if I can get that sh to show you right there. Focus. There we go. I get this on Amazon. I'll try and put a link in the uh, description there or show you a screenshot or something. Anyway, it's um, quarter inch by 48 inch right there. Okay. So, what this is, is this a top and a bottom. So, Your top is going to be the long piece. Your bottom is going to be the short piece. That way you lift the glass in and you drop it down. Okay, let's get this part here. Okay. So 
So this is your bottom tracking. You can see right there. And this is going to be your top tracking, like right there. So this is going to go up here. This is going to go down there. So how do you how do you get it on here? Now, when I first started building cages, I just nailed them straight down right here. Just nailed them with little nails. You just put them in. Eh, doesn't work real great. Over time, they wobble and they work those nails out. So there's several ways you can mount this. So the first way would be to mount it straight here on the edge and then put a board, a lip. So like I have a lip here, you would put the lip behind it. Okay. And that way you get support on the bottom and one side. Okay. And that also gives you a place to put bedding. So probably a two inch lip. I think I mine are almost three inch. Um, but that's one way you can do it. So you'd have a board right there. Okay. Now you're going to pay more for the glass because you're going to have more glass. But that's an easy, easy way of doing it. So if I was building new cages without, you know, my old ones, I might do that. But I've already started with, you know, I like, I like everything to look the same. So um, <clears throat> how I do it now is I glue two pieces of this plywood together right here. So this is two pieces glued together. And then on my table saw with a dado stack, I groove out for this track to fit in. And so this fits in just like that. So now I have three sides to support this track. The little glue in there, it's not going anywhere. So, and then this would be the top piece here. We'd mount that. So, um, now, say you wanted to do that, but you don't have a table saw and you don't have a dado stack. So, my first set of cages, what I did is I had two pieces of wood like this, right? Now, the first piece I cut longer than the bottom piece. So the difference, so I could put this on this one and then I would cut this one to come up flush with it, right? So I have two pieces of wood. This one's flush with the track and then that way I get two sides of support for the track. Now, it does stick out a little bit on this. So on my next set of cages, I added a, a thin strip of wood inside so that this track wouldn't stick over the edge. It doesn't really matter. My first cages stick over on the edge a little bit. They work fine. They've never broken free or anything like that. But if you want them flush, you would have to add a small piece of plywood in there. Um, but those are the three ways that you can do it. Um, if you have a dado stack, might as well go ahead and just route it out and set it in there. It's never going to go anywhere. Matter of fact, you don't even need to glue. Use glue to put them in there. They fit so tight. Uh, so anyway, that's how I put the, 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 the fronts and the sides on. Um, you could use a different kind of wood if you wanted, I guess, a thicker piece and just route it out. Or, but I like it to kind of match, so that's why I use the same wood. So. That's where we're at. Um, I'm going to go ahead and glue these. I got to glue four of these together. Um, and then we'll go from there. All right. Hey, everybody. Uh, back. Uh, finished gluing the pieces of wood together. Went ahead and threw them on the table saw. And with the dado stack, grooved them out. So now this is my bottom. This is my top. Um, and the track. Put the small one on the bottom. Like that. So it just fits right in there like that. And Put a little glue in there, make sure it doesn't come out. Um, top one too, goes in like that. And there you have it. So the glass slides in and down and then it goes in the track. Um, what's nice about working with wood is if you cut it too short or too long, you can always kind of fix it. So when I went to test the piece of glass, it was um, a little bit off. So I just put some wood shims uh, back up in here on the top to 
bring this back down a little bit, and now the glass is perfect. Uh, I got a piece of glass here I can show you. Just kind of lift it in, down, and that's sliding glass. So that's good. So <clears throat> my next step is um, oh, I was going to show you one thing. So if you didn't want to buy the tracks, but you did have a dado stack or table saw, you could make your own track. Uh, and I'm going to probably do this in the future. I'm going to test it. But you can see um, I have, let's see which way, there you go. I have grooved it right here. That would be the top piece, a little deeper. And that would be the bottom piece. And so you could just have that there and would slide along that wood instead of using the plastic. Uh, so I think that would work pretty good as long as you got a nice, good, clean cut where it wouldn't catch on any wood. So that's another option. All right. Um, so my next step, if I wasn't putting in a um, shelf, would be to sand this down, um, especially the bottom. I want the bottom really smooth because when I go to put my polyurethane on, I want it to uh, just be like glass, just like plastic when I'm done. I want it really smooth so it helps me clean. Um, typically I do one coat over everything on the inside and then I do three to four coats on the bottom. The bottom and the sides about four inches up. Um, I just do a lot of coats uh, because that's where you're going to get the poop and the, the messiness. Um, so what I use is it is Minwax, fast drying polyurethane, I use to clear gloss. Um, now, a lot of people will say, oh, that's toxic to your animals. Um, yeah, it would be if I were to polyurethane it and then three days later put a snake in it, which I don't. Um, I don't put a snake in it for at least a month. So I'm gonna make this cage and it's gonna sit in here in this garage until one day I walk out and I can't smell that polyurethane anymore. Once it's cured, you're good to go. It will not harm your animals. But I would not put an animal in it until it is 100% cured because it is toxic. Um, so basically, um, what I'm going to do now is I like to put a shelf in my cages. Uh, it gives the animals, you know, more room to to move around and exercise. So um, my first shelf, you know, I built was straight across the back and. You know, I noticed that the snakes would um, hit the corner. They'd try to go up in the corner back here, and then it would discourage them from getting on the shelf. Um, so what I did is, and there's probably a million ways to do this, I built kind of like a little boomerang um, to go in there. So when they go to the corner, they come up on to the platform. So um, another way you could do this is just do a straight piece and then cut a circle, you know, on the corners. So when they come up to the corner, they can get on the shelf. Um, this is just the first thing I came up with, and so um, I'm gonna stick with it because I have OCD. So um, how I make these is I start off with just a 14 inch, uh, you know, piece of wood. This is a little longer, but, um, and I just cut it out. So, um, you know, cut the middle out and the sides and then I get a shelf, so pretty simple. So how I install these is um, I've got these little blocks that I keep. Um, these three inside, this one's for the outside. Um, I set these inside, I set the shelf on it. This one's a little longer, right? Because what it is, it's the thickness of the bottom here. So when I stick this on this table, it will be even with this piece. So now I know where to screw right in. Um, that helps me you know, hit the piece of wood. So I'm gonna install this shelf real quick and then um, I'll get to uh, sanding. So.
put my pieces and I store them away for the next time I want to build a cage. So I always keep those around, especially like when I build uh, racks for tubs, I always keep those pieces too. So in case I ever want to build another rack, um, I've already got those already cut off. It makes it real simple. Okay, so I got my shelf installed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sand it down. Get it a good sanding. Um, be nice to get all the edges kind of smooth. Make the fronts look real good. Get the floor real good. Back and top, uh, probably not so much. It's already pre uh, pre finished or sanded, um, but uh, I'm gonna run it over real quick. Get a little the rough burrs off the wood. So now it's basically ready for uh, polyurethane. I'll polyurethane it, uh, let it dry, and put a couple coats on the bottom, and it's done. Um, it's that simple. So it really doesn't take a whole lot to build one of these. Um, it just you're going to make some mistakes, but just learn to live with it and fix them and go on. So. Um, this cage, when I first built it, it was pretty bad wood. I shouldn't have picked this piece of wood. I should have went through it better. But it was kind of wonky. It was like off. So I had to get some clamps and kind of clamp it, push it back in line, use a, use a square so it's, you know, lined up. And uh, that way, when I put these on, this helps square it up. So, um, All right, so that's pretty much it. I'm going to polyurethane it. And then I'll come back and show you. Oh, one other thing. Um, what I do for heat tape, I'll show you that. Um, after I polyurethane it, I will videotape how I, uh, where I put my heat tape. Um, I groove out the bottom with a dado stack so that it's uh, not compressed between the pieces of wood on the cages. So I'll show you that too. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video now, polyurethane it, and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Um, I got my first coat on. I uh, basically take it down to the bottom here and I, I just literally take the can and pour a bunch in there and then just slop it on. I start with the back, then I just stand it up, pull it all down, do the sides. Uh, really make sure that when you're polyurethane, you're getting a lot of it in the corners and the cracks. You want that polyurethane to seal that up for you real good. That way, snake ever pees, the water's not gonna, or the urine's not gonna run out the back or the front. Uh, so you get the cracks real good. Just get everything real good. Just let that wood soak in that polyurethane and uh, it'll, it'll seal it for life. Um, so once you're done with the first coat, uh, I'll come back, you know, in about a day and I'm gonna put another coat on the bottom. Now, I don't polyurethane the outside, so sides, the bottom, the back, I do not treat it at all because uh, I keep them in a stack. You're never going to see that. Um, so if you're going to just have one and you want it to look real nice, you can go ahead and um, polyurethane it, paint it, whatever you want to do. Um, and if, you, if you're just going to have one, I would get uh, two-sided or the two, uh, yeah, the, the finished on two sides. So this is only 
uh, finished on one side. So on this side, you can see there's like knot holes and stuff like that. So you can buy the plywood that's finished on both sides and then it would look really nice if you went ahead and finished it all. So anyway, I will put about three or four coats on this and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna install a light in here. Um, I'll show you how, I, what kind of lights I use. I've got a bunch of these at Lowe's on clearance. Anytime I'm in Lowe's, I walk by the lighting section and look for clearance lights and you can find them uh, quite often. Um, this one here, I probably paid, I wanna say about six or seven dollars for these and they were about $30. So um, I'll show you how those, I install those. They're real nice LED lights. Um, yep, I'll put a couple more coats, we'll install the light, I'll groove the bottom, and then we're done. <clears throat> okay everyone, um, I got my polyurethane on the bottom, I think I did uh, four coats on here. It's a nice smooth surface, real shiny now, uh, so it should be fairly easy to clean. Uh, polyurethane up around here about three inches. And this just has one coat. Uh, if you want to do more coats, go ahead and just build one cage. Um, so now all that I got left, I installed the light. Um, I was going to say, uh, just install a light before you put the shelf in. If you're going to use the shelf, it kind of makes it difficult to attach it. So I had to take the shelf out to get the light in. Um, if you buy a light that already has a cord attached to it, just drill a hole here in the middle and then take your screws out here, 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 and here, and then just pry the top open and get your cord in and just run it around to the hole. That way you have a small hole with the cord going through it. Um, and try to get your, your light fixture all the way to the back to where the cord is not sticking out because snakes will find that cord and they'll get up in it, they'll get stuck, or they'll pull it down. Um, yeah, you just wanna make sure that that cord is out of the way. Uh, so now really all that's left is getting the track in I did groove the bottom for heat tape, let me show you that. So I put, put it on my uh, table saw and I grooved out the bottom. Uh, so my, my flex watt will just be stapled on just like that. So, and that way there's a little bit of gap for air so it's not squishing the heat tape. So. If, you don't, if you can't groove the bottom, then you just put little spacers like some nickels or something, some washers or something, just get that heat tape a little bit of air. Um, so now all that I gotta do is put in the, the, this uh, tracking. Um, I like to just take a little bit of sandpaper and rough it up a little bit. That way the glue will, uh, you know, kind of stick to the surface a little bit, you know, because if it's real smooth, it has a little hard time sticking, but um, you just rough it up a little bit. Doesn't take much. And then uh, the glue I use is Gorilla Glue. It doesn't take much, it holds pretty well. Um, just a little bit here. do is cure so it still smells a little bit like polyurethane um, so I'm just gonna let it sit probably for a couple weeks I'm in no hurry um, I just call my local glass shop and I tell them the size I need and they cut it. And that's pretty much it. So there's the cage. If you have any questions, uh, 
you know, put them down in the comment section and I will try and answer those. Um, in my next video, I have recently uh, built a shop for my snakes. I am just waiting for the electrical work to be completed and then I'll be moving them out to a shop. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. I'll be able to have more cages uh, and expand a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna do a video of my shop and how I built it and things like that. So appreciate you watching. Thanks.